Out of the gun, looking for the end zone. He wants it. Caught! It's a touchdown, Lucas Bacon! Welcome to Cube Zone, where we show you what others cannot. I'm Brinkley Hill. And I'm Jerrica DiQuisto. Today we will be discussing the end of a Mariner season and the beginning of a new era. We will also be talking about some women's soccer. Sounds great. Let's get into the news. The Mariners ended their best season since 2003 this weekend, finishing with a record of 90-72. and 72. It was disappointing for all Seattle fans, as they were in tight race for one of the American League wildcard spots. They were unable to secure a spot after they lost the series to the LA Angels. Playoff baseball begins this week, and for the Mariners, it will continue their drought for 20 seasons. There is optimism for the future, however, being one of the youngest teams in the league and having one of the best minor league systems in baseball. In other Seattle news, we're sending it over to Trevor Junt and Noah Bolter, who will be taking a deep dive into the Seahawks 49er game from the weekend wrap-up with Trevor Junt. Okay, let's get into the first game. The first game is Seattle versus San Francisco. And I am a diehard Seahawks fan, as many of you guys are. We needed this victory more than anything else. The only thing keeping us alive this season after a 1-2 and two start to two teams that our division rival already beat was the fact that we still have all our divisional games left. We have two this week. We started off hot, 28-21 to 21 victory, tying us up in the division with the San Francisco 49ers at 2-2 two and two for both of our records. We started off terribly in this game. It was historically bad. Two three and outs, an 0-7 and start, uh, but eventually even our defense picked it up before our offense got it together. We saw an interception by Quandre Diggs, but offensively five straight drives to start the game uh, very poorly. Uh, it was a 167 to negative three start to the game uh, in terms of yards gained between the two teams in the first quarter, which was extremely embarrassing. And it wasn't until a late drive in the first half where Russell Wilson and the Seahawks got their offense together. After the game, they talked about it. Russell Wilson went up to Shane Waldron, the offensive coordin coordinator, and told him, we need to run up tempo. They, they sped up the tempo. They scored before the half. The second half, we saw turnovers, uh, or another turnover on behalf of the 49ers that allowed Seattle the opportunity uh, to take a lead that they never looked back from. Trevor, I got to get your thoughts on this game as a fellow Seahawks. Well, yeah, you totally you saw momentum shift in the second I mean, in the second quarter. Uh, there was about like five minutes left, and then they scored on the pass to DK Metcalf. And then uh, in the third quarter early on, Russell Wilson scored on that scram. Oh. Whenever Russell Wilson scrambles and scores a touchdown, like the Seahawks usually win. Uh, I don't know the exact stats, but that it's well known. Uh, and then also, let's get into it, Trey Lance. Uh, Trey Lance came in for the second half because Jimmy Garoppolo had a calf injury. If you notice this, though, uh, if you notice in, in players that come in and replace players, uh, it's usually like an injury that happens to the, to the quarterback uh, that, that the other guy takes over. So I think from here on out, I think Trey Lance will take over and, and just be the, the future of the 49ers. And then uh, one more thing. We're going to jump into overtime in this game. We're going to add a minute. <laughs> You're good, man. We're good. And then uh, let's talk about Shanahan, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I love Kyle Shanahan. Yep. But he did not do well with Trey Lance, which was surprising. Because, like, they have that one scheme of just the options with Trey Lance. Uh, but he developed an offense for RG3 back in Washington when he was at Washington, obviously. But he didn't develop an offense for Trey Lance yet, which is so sur surprising to me uh, he, because he's such a good head coach and he like develops so well and schemes so well. What's your opinion on the Niners, Trey Lance, and Kyle Shanahan then? Well, and see, what I was, as a Seahawks fan, I was terrified. When, when the Niners had the third overall pick, I was hoping they would take Mac Jones. Me too. Because Me too. Mac Jones is not mobile. And while that is a fit in Kyle Shanahan's system, I'm scared of the extra element that Trey Lance brings to the Niners that we saw as soon as he got into the game. They started running RPO, as, as Jamal Adams spoke about in postgame. That was all they were running as soon as he got into the game. There was the blown coverage. Uh, but what we saw and what I, I, I think you were alluding to is that Trey Lance still doesn't fully understand the system. He needs time to figure out because with, with the West Coast offense, it is so complex. All the looks, uh, they'll show you different looks and do the same things. It's something that you have to get a feel for. He's played very few games in the last two years, and so he still needs time to learn the system. I think he'll be just fine, though. Before we jump into the next game, I do want to add one more point. So uh, I, I will say it's an outside, run, like outside zone offense, you know, yes. and like they run the ball incredibly, but yes. they, they didn't run the ball super well in this yes. game. Uh, and then uh, 
these the other teams look too special to me. I, I, I don't know what you think, but, but uh, Seattle doesn't really look like Super Bowl contenders and San Francisco don't either. Diving into volleyball, the women's team hosted both L.A. schools over the weekend. The Cougs' eight-match winning streak came to an end last Friday. USC gave the Cougs their first at-home loss. The Trojans took the first two sets and left no hope for a Cougs comeback as they took a 3-1 to one victory. WSU looked to bounce back in their match against the 15th-ranked Bruins but fell in a heartbreaker 3-2. to two. A couple highlights from this weekend included Pia Timmer recording her third straight double-double. This marks her fifth of the year. But how about Penny Tusa? She posted three aces to bring her all-time total to 123. She is now tied with Kyra Holt for the sixth all-time in career aces in WSU history. The Cougar football team had a big victory against Cal on Saturday. Quarterback Jaden Delora played for the first time since injuring his knee against USC. Late in the first quarter, wide receiver Calvin Jackson Jr. contoured his body for an absolute stunning five-yard one-handed toe-touch snag in the corner of the end zone. If this play is not on SportsCenter's top 10 plays of the week or top 10 plays of the year, it might be as rigged as winning the lottery. The Cougars' defense played lights out while their offense put together 21 first downs and 332 offensive total yards. The Cougs pulled out a dub, winning 21-6. WSU women's soccer beat Colorado on Sunday 2-0 after a scoreless first half. Freshman goalie Nadia Cooper had four saves and set up Elise Bennett for the first point of the game at the beginning of the second period. WSU forward Alyssa Gray scored the second goal with 19 minutes left in the game, sealing the win for the Cougs. The women's soccer team will be looking to rack up their 10th win of the season against Stanford on Thursday. Stanford has gone 8-3 and three on the season and will be the Cougs' biggest test so far. Head to the lower soccer fields Thursday at 5 p.m. to cheer them on to victory. Now to Brendan with Coug Outlook. My name is Brendan Jin and I'm here with your Coug Outlook. First up this week is women's volleyball. Last week they went on a two-game slide but looked to bounce back against the Arizona State Sun Devils. The game will take place tomorrow in Arizona at 7 p.m. They will continue their stay in Arizona as the Cougs face the University of Arizona Wildcats on 12 p.m. on Sunday. Next is women's soccer, which is currently the top team in the Pac-12. Both games are at home this weekend, so it's important for all of us to go out and show our support. Tomorrow, they will face the Stanford Cardinals at 5 p.m. And on Sunday, they'll take on the Cow Bears at 1 o'clock. After two weeks of playing on the road, the Cougs will face Oregon State Beavers at Gaysa Field. Kickoff is at 1 o'clock on Sunday. Next, swimming heads to Fresno State this Friday and Saturday, as they'll be taking place in the Chick-fil-A Invitational. The tennis team heads to Seattle on Friday for an all-weekend event against the Washington Huskies. And finally, the men's golf team will travel to Corvallis to take on Oregon State Beavers. It's a two-day event and will begin on Monday. This wraps up your Coug Outlook. I'm Brendan Jin, sending it back to the desk with Brinkley and Jerrica. Check us out on Instagram at unorthodox.sports and more unorthodox sports content on the Cable 8 YouTube. Thanks for tuning in. I'm Brinkley Hill. And I'm Jerrica DiQuisto. Have a wonderful rest of your week. And happy homecoming. As always, go Cougs.